Hey, this is Jerry from Bliss Studio, and in this part of the Flappy Bird tutorial series, we're going to set up our pipes and letting our pipes animate across the screen. Then once they reach the end of the screen, we're gonna go ahead and delete them. That's gonna set up our pipes. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so here we're back in Unity, and we need to go ahead and set up our pipes. Now, the way we're gonna do this is to go ahead and set up a prefab. And then what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna generate that off screen, have that move across the screen, and then when it gets to the other side, we're gonna delete it. And then anytime the character hits one of the pipes that's on the top or the bottom, that's going to destroy the character. And then if, it, if the character moves through the middle, passes through, then we're going to add to the score. So let's go ahead and get this started. And before I set up those pipes, I wanna go ahead and change my main camera to be just a solid background. And the way I'm gonna do that is just to go into my camera and change the background environment from skybox to a solid color, just so we're kinda of going more with the idea of the Flappy Birds look. So he's flapping around in the sky. And we'll add background in another video. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, let's go ahead and start with our pipes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to add an empty game object. So I'm gonna create a game object. I'm gonna call this pipes. And I wanna make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. And then I actually want this to be positioned off screen. I'm gonna go ahead and make this so where it's off screen. And for my mobile format here, it's going to be a positive three. And we're gonna generate our pipes off screen then we're gonna have them move to the other side of the screen, then be destroyed. So we're gonna detect if they're at a position of negative three, then we'll delete it. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our pipe. I have a pipe that I created in Asset Forge, along with all the rest of the graphics for this. And I have that pipe and I'm gonna drag that into my pipes. So the size is a little bit on the small side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change that back to 111 and we are good to go. Now, the next thing I need to do is to go ahead and also set up a collider for this. So let's go ahead and add a box collider. And the reason I'm using a box collider is because the bottom of that pipe is rectangular. I don't want it to be curved like a capsule. I wanna go ahead and if the player hits the edge of that, I wanna go ahead and have that player be destroyed. So let's go ahead and edit the collider. I do wanna give them just a little bit of a, a benefit, a little bit of, make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take the collider on this and just decrease the size so that it fits the pipe specifically and not worry about the very edge of the collar. All right, so we have that done. The other thing we need to do with our collider is we need to make sure this is triggered. The other thing we need to do with our pipe is we need to also go ahead and tag this. So I'm gonna create two tags. The first tag is going to be pipe. So that way the player can detect if they've hit a pipe. We're gonna create another tag and this one's going to be pipe score. So let's go back to our pipe. We need to actually then tag it. So we created the tag and now we're using the tag on that pipe. Cool, that is all set up. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna duplicate this pipe. I'm gonna rotate it on the x-axis at a negative 180 degrees, which flips it upside down. Cool, now I can go ahead and separate these so that they are far enough apart that we can allow the user to get through, okay? So let's, and we can play with this later on in the prefab, but for now, we'll, we'll kind of create it something like this. Yeah, that works. All right, the other thing that we need to do is we need to actually create a trigger area in between those pipes. And that's what our pipe score is gonna be. So also within pipes, I'm gonna go ahead and create a cube. So a 3D cube. And you can easily do this with 2D as well. It doesn't have to be 3D, I'm just creating this in 3D. But the same principles apply. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that at zero, zero, zero. Oops, I'm at a negative. Let's make this a zero, zero, zero. I've got everything at a negative. Let's make sure those are all zero. There we go, cool. All right, so let's go over here. And what we're gonna do with this cube is we're gonna make it so where it fills the space. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my scale tool here and scale this up so that it matches. 
up to the very top and the very bottom of the space between the two pipes. This already has a box collider attached to it. We definitely need to make sure that it's checked as trigger, and then we also need to, to tag it. So let's call this pipe, pipe score. And then I also need to tag it with that pipe score. Cool. So that is set up. Now, of course, we don't want to see this cube. So let's go ahead and uncheck mesh render. So we're only really just using the collider of this game object. All right, so we've got the, our pipes set up and ready to go. Now, the other thing that we need to do, again, is I want to spawn this on screen, and then I want to move it across the screen. So let's go ahead and set up a Playmaker FSM for our pipes. So I'm going to add an FSM. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and have this first state be move pipes. And what we're going to do is use a translate. Translate. There we go. And so what this does is it updates the position every frame per second, okay? So we want to update it in the X axis and to the left is going to be a negative X. So what I wanna do here, as opposed to unchecking our variable and then putting in a number here, I wanna be able to update that number later on. If I have this hard coded in by setting a number now, then what's going to happen is I'm not going to be able to update that very easily. So what I want to do is I want to create this as a global variable. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that checked and I'm going to create a new global variable and we'll call this pipe speed. Cool. And then we're going to go ahead and then use that pipe speed here. Okay. So I haven't set up the pipe speed just yet. I need to go ahead and do that in my global variable. So I've got pipe speed, and now the, the default value is zero, we're gonna have this be a negative one. Cool, and we can always update that number later on. And especially since it's a global variable, we'll be able to update that very, very easily. So that's going to actually move our pipes. So what we also need to do is if our pipes reach a position of negative three, then we need to go ahead and delete that off screen. So what we need to do is to go ahead and do a compare. And for us to be able to compare that, we need to actually get the position of our pipes. So the first thing we're gonna do is to get position. And we're gonna get position. And I need to get the position of the X value. So we're gonna create a new variable. And I'll just call this X pause for position. And we wanna update that every frame. So we're gathering the information of where our X value is. The next thing we need to do is to do a float compare. We wanna compare our current position with negative three. So let's go ahead and do a float compare because our position is a float value. So we wanna compare our X position with the value of negative three. That way, if it gets to negative three, we need to do something. If our pipes are at negative three or less than negative three, we're gonna call an event of destroy pipes. So let's go ahead and create a new event here. We'll call destroy pipes. So we're gonna create that. We need to add that transition. And if it's less than that as well, we're gonna go ahead and destroy pipes. We're not gonna worry about greater than. And we need to do this every frame and I'm gonna move this to the bottom of my stack here. Cool, so we're moving the pipes, we're getting the position of the pipes every frame, and then we're gonna do a float compare. So once our pipes reach negative three, we need to go to a new state that destroys our pipes. So let's go ahead and go off to a new state. So I'm hitting the control key or command key, dragging off to a new state, and we'll just call this destroy pipes. Cool. So that is set up. So the other thing that we want to do here is just destroy our pipes. And so we're going to destroy our game object. So we're going to go ahead and destroy self, add that in, and that is it. Our pipes are done. So the other thing that we need to do with the pipes is now just make that a prefab. For us to make a prefab, all we got to do is just drag it from our scene into our prefabs folder. Now you can actually drag it to any folder, but I have a folder called prefabs and that's where I'll stick that. So let's go ahead and just drag that down into prefabs. And now you can see that this 
icon has changed to be a solid cube and blue. So that lets me know that this game object is a prefab. So I can go ahead and just delete that from my scene now because I'm gonna generate these on screen. All right, so we've got our pipes, so they're gonna be moving. We've got all the triggers all set up and the colliders, everything is good to go. So let's go ahead and do this. We need to go ahead and create a spawner. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new empty game object and I'm gonna call this pipe spawner. So we're gonna use this for two things. One is we're gonna use it to contain our pipes and then we're gonna also use this as the position for where those pipes are being spawned. I wanna have it at a position of three on the x-axis. So it's gonna be off screen and a position of zero and zero on the X and the Y. Okay, so we have our pipe spawner set. Now let's go back to our game manager. So here's again, the game manager is where we're storing all the scripts for the main game. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna add a new FSM. And I'm gonna label this because we might have multiple FSMs here. So we wanna make sure we know exactly what each one is. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this pipe spawner cool now that we have that set up in our first state we're going to call this pipe spawner as well so the first thing i'm going to do is to create a random float so let's go float random i'm going to add that to my state and what this is the this is going to be the position on the y-axis of the spawner so we can kind of change the position every time we spawn that object so I'm gonna do from a negative one to a positive one. And we can update these numbers later on, but I wanna, every time I create a pipe, I want to set a random float for the position of our spawner. Okay, so I just need to create a new variable and let's call this pipes position. Okay, so we've set our random float. Now the next thing I need to do is to set the position of my spawner. So let's go ahead and add a set position. And we're not gonna be of the owner, which is the game manager. We need to set the position of our spawner. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag my pipe spawner down. The next thing I need to do is to update that with my pipes position. Cool, and we don't need to check every frame here because we're only doing it once every time we spawn one of our pipes. So I'm getting a random number, setting the spawner on the y-axis based off that number, and then we need to go ahead and create a pipe. So let's go ahead and create object. I'll drag that underneath here, the pipe spawner. And I need to go ahead and what game object is it we wanna create? Well, I want to create my pipes. So let's drag that over. And I'm gonna set the spawn point as being our pipe spawner. And then that is all we need to do there. Let's go ahead and add a finished event. I'm gonna to transition to finished. I'm gonna go ahead and go to a new state. So I drag over by holding the control and dragging. And we'll call this wait. All right, so we're gonna wait for a specific period of time. So let's go ahead and just type in wait, add this action. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to be two seconds. And then we're gonna go ahead and have a finished transition. Let's go ahead and add that state. And then we'll drag that back over to our pipe spawner. So here in our pipe spawner, we are getting a random float. We're setting the position of our spawner on the Y axis. We're creating one of those pipes. Then we're waiting for two seconds and then we're gonna go create another one. So let's give this a test to see if this works. Let me just, I'm gonna uncheck, yeah use gravity on my bird so I don't wanna to have to deal with the bird right now. So let's go ahead and hit play. And now we should see our pipes getting spawned and going across the screen. Boom, there we go. And if we need to, we can always adjust those numbers, but you can see how those are being generated on screen. I think I'm gonna adjust the variable there for the pipe spawn position. I'm gonna go ahead and just decrease this a little bit from a negative 0.8 to a positive 0.8, just so they're not as drastic of differences there. Yeah, I think that works pretty good. So 
So we now have that being generated. There's some things that I need to update with the bird, but you can see that my pipes are being generated. I'm able to flap around the, the space. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this particular part of the Flappy Bird tutorial series. We're gonna go ahead and set up detecting our pipes when our player hits them, as well as adding score to our UI. Again, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time. Thank you.